Hi everybody and welcome back to Tom's Trains and Things. This is episode number four of At the Workbench. Today we're going to discuss this little model right here. It's Tower Gas and it's made by Foss Scale Models and we'll go through a step-by-step -step procedure of uh, how to assemble it. And you can get a good look at it right here. Today I'm going to show you how to assemble tower gas. It's a Foss scale model and um, I'd like to say a little bit about Foss scale. They, they do a pretty good job. Um, the original uh, boards that I received um, when I took, it, took them off I noticed that they were the clapboard was on was backward or upside down on here so I contacted him and uh, let him know about it and he sent me uh, new wood and everything so I could finish the kit and for my troubles he sent me a, uh, a DVD and a blow pop is that one it? yeah blow pop okay so I'm satisfied the instructions on here are pretty easy they show you where to put all the bracing and everything and one thing you got to remember when you're when you're cutting the bracing is uh, be aware of where the roof line is on the uh, on your wall panels I already cut the bracing on here these are all the the uh, uh, 532 square uh, wood that I'm going to use for the bracing um, these are all the the panels I have them lined up in the in the way that they go this is the back panel this is the the one side this is the front this is the other side and this is the tower right here and this is a little shed right here this is the roof of the shed this is the bracing for the overhang here is the uh, the roof uh, for the uh, for the tower and this is the roof for the flat section here's all the lumber that you're going to need for assembling the kit and here's all the um, the detail parts in there the windows the doors the chimney and uh, a couple of smokestacks and and uh, it looks like uh, two uh, empty 55 gallon drums uh, a lamp and here we have uh, two uh, tanks uh, another trash can and a tire okay so that's everything on there and uh, the, this is what they use you could use any kind of paper for for the uh, tar paper uh, you paint, paint this I usually paint it on the back and then I cut it on the lines on the front and then here's all the uh, the signage that comes with the kit and, and we'll go through that and here's one more thing here's the uh, front and back of the gas tank gas uh, pump there's the, the glass and the garage and the, the panes for the garage if this is the first time for a uh, laser cut wood kit then uh, it would be a good idea to, to uh, read all the instructions first and uh, look at all the diagrams and make sure you're familiar with all the parts in here and uh, you're sure of what you, you're going to be doing and like me I've, I've assembled probably about 30 uh, laser cut wood kits from uh, three or four different uh, manufacturers and um, I still look at the instructions I have all my bracing ready to go and I put them on just to make sure that you know I have all the all the pieces cut as shown uh, one thing you have to uh, be aware of on the Foss scale models especially this one here is the way that they they show the uh, the panels on the diagram is on the detail side so actually the the bracing goes on the opposite side so it might be a little bit confusing if you're if this is your first kit or so but just be aware that that that's how it is you have to turn these things over and then uh, put the bracing on the opposite side because that's the de detailed side right there and the bracing actually goes on the on the other side of, of this I'm going to do the outside bracing first and uh, I use this uh, square block to do it. I, I put the piece up against there and then put a lot of the glue and then put this up against there just to give it a guide so you so you make sure you have a nice uh, square corner. I'll apply the glue on here. 
once I get it on there I just I just smooth it off a little bit and then you just set it over here on the side make sure you're tied up against the block and I use a little uh, tweezer here just to just to push it over make sure everything's square on there this other corner on here where there's two different roof lines I put the corner put this up against the corner brace right right like that and then I marked right there with the pencil where the where the roof line is for the for the top part as a guide so I don't go too high with the, with this one brace here so I'll put my glue on here and stick that right into place okay make sure that this is tight up against there and then this is also tight and square with that piece right there and then just set it down and then there you go on this wall right here since it's so long I put an extra piece of bracing in there uh, your uh, clapboard is running this way so it's gonna tend to uh, bend that way so without the uh, brace over here you might get a little bit of warpage over here the other piece is going to be over there so you make sure you have the clearance because this is going to go like this and that's going to get glued like right there I have all my bracing in place and I'm ready to uh, hit this with a primer my corner trim which I I don't show it's a 1 16th inch uh, I'll paint those and after everything is dry I'll attach them to the edges here before I glue everything together I have the everything primed now and it's nice and dry so I'm gonna start uh, putting the uh, corner pieces on uh, I'm ready to start gluing this stuff together once I once I get the, the side pieces on here then I'll be able to uh, dis distress this a little bit and put the signage on I'll put the signage on bef while it's still flat before uh, you know I uh, put it together all right I have my pieces cut for the trim and I cut them just a little bit longer than what I need them so I you know so once they're on there I could trim them off and I just take the, the glue and I just drag it along the piece okay and see this is the inside that's where the excess was right there I'll just stick it over here on the side and make sure it's up tight against it and then I'll just put my square up against it make sure it's good and tight and I'll just get these little tweezers right here and make sure they're pushed down because they fit right inside there I don't want to be poking with the exacto knife because then I'll be pulling it back up out of the way so there it is right there as you can see on here I have one one side that's uh, completely bare because what I did was when I paint when I painted them I just left them laying down there and I just sprayed um, you know just one pass on it to get just two sides and you get a little bit of overspray on here so that that's the side that I'm gonna leave up on the inside for right now and the up here I did it a little bit long okay because there's a freeze board that goes up on the on the top of here that's uh, uh, this piece right here this fits up on the top so we have our corner pieces that go up along the edge of that okay here's the the one side the finished piece with the uh, 
with the trim on the sides. Now all I have to do is just wait for that to dry and while that's drying and I'll go on to work on something else. I'm going to do the the uh, the window glass on the door right now okay I'm using uh, testers clear part cement and window maker uh, it's actually a canopy glue and there's a lot of different manufacturers out there uh, this is what I have right now so I'll be using this and what I do is just put a little bit of dab over here and then what you do is you just drag it across the pane like that and you have instant windows okay I have all the windows done I just see it these two larger windows with the six panes in it and then I have the three smaller windows with the four panes in it and it you know it's you just wait for them to dry and you move on to the next step the only brick on this project is this chimney right here and what I'm going to do to simulate the mortar is use uh, this light gray I'm just going to put a little bit on this right here I mean that's way too much to begin with but you know for that small piece and I'm just going to put a little bit, little bit of water in there also I'll just, and with this you don't even need a brush normally I, I would I'd, I'd apply it with a brush or even on this I'd, I'd apply it with this this little tool here and you can see already it you know it's it but what what you could do is just take your thumb take your finger and if you need to you can get a get a paper towel and just wipe it gently all you're doing is taking the paint off of the off of the surface and the and leaving leaving the paint in the in the little ridges in there I have to tilt it a little bit and what I could do is just uh, spray some matte finish on it. it it looks a little bit shiny on there and then up on the top I'll just go over it a little bit with the with the uh, gray and fill that in but I want to let this dry a little bit before I do anything else with it I set up the uh, chopper to cut the freeze board. I have it set for just a uh, hair over what I need. Uh, since it's perfectly square, I'll just cut four pieces. And there we have the four identical pieces, and that those go up on top of the uh, tower part right underneath the uh, the roof. I'm going to put the Waltz Garage sign right above the door. I'm going to center it above the door and put it on the third clapboard above the door just like that. Okay. So what I do I'm going to leave it the same thickness and normally just take some some glue and just put it on the back of it. And uh, wipe it off the finger. And that makes the, uh, the paper a little bit soft. So what I'm going to do is put it right there like that. And I'll be able to adjust it a little bit while the glue is still wet. I'm going to rub it in to the creases of the clapboard. And then once this, this dries, then I can go over it with a little bit of steel wool or a real fine. Okay, so. Here we have the Walls Garage. And once I get the decals on, I'll distress the, the wood a little bit more. And basically all I do is just go over this. I go over the signs real light. 
just to make you know just to give it the appearance of that it's uh, been worn a little bit I come over here on these corner pieces where I cut the uh, the trim just a little bit long I'm just gonna trim them off right here you could use a straight edge on here or you could use a a chisel blade but it doesn't really matter just as long as you get uh, the same effect on it you know just make sure it's straight right there this is delicate and we'll just place it in there and it fits in there real nice I'll just take the edge of this right here and make sure it's done in there and what I'll do is I'll just hit it with a little bit more canopy glue just press it down into place okay I'm just gonna put a little dab in opposite corners I'll put a little bit here a little bit there. I don't want to go over over the edge of it. And it's not going to need a lot. I'm going to uh, glue the four main walls together now. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to there's two surfaces that are going to be touching here. On, on the walls so I'm gonna put some glue down in here okay so I'm gonna put this in here like that and I'm gonna put it up against the square I'm gonna move this off to the side and I'm gonna do the other two walls I'll take another square and I'll put these two together I let the two uh, two sections uh, dry a little bit and I just applied some uh, some glue to the edges and I'm going to put them together make sure that it is square Okay, what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn this over a little bit and then put it back between the, the squares. I'm going to turn it this way because of the little tower up on top. But I'm going to put the uh, rubber bands on it to hold it in place. And then I'll let it so it can dry. So just put these up here, put one up toward the top. And you can slide it up there. There we go on that side and on this side. And we'll just let that dry like that. While I'm waiting for the glue to dry, I'm test fitting the, the roof. Okay, so that fits pretty good. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull this off right now and I'm going to uh, apply the uh, the tar paper. What I'm going to do is I'm going to cut it into into strips and then once they're on there then I'm going to paint them and then I'll apply the roof to it. So once you get it get the first part uh, pulled up it's easy to get off. You don't, you don't want to pull the whole tape off Okay, so I'm just going to take this first piece right here, and it'll let it overhang just a little bit. Just put it right on the edge. Okay, using the uh, tape as a guide and I know the tape 
at least the first tape was was straight okay so and we just continue on up until we finish the entire roof I'll come up to the next course and I'll leave that on there just in just until I'm ready to get up there but if this doesn't go all the way up that's all right you could still pull pull it off I'm gonna put it's called midnight a folk art paint and I'm gonna simulate the the, the uh, tar sealer on the joints so I'm just gonna run run it just along here okay so there's this one right here okay and I'll do the same thing with the uh, the larger flat roof okay I finished the uh, the roof section and uh, there it is it just gives it uh, a little bit uh, more detail so you can see the, the lines in it and it, you know, it gives you the tar effect okay I'm putting the the caps on top of the walls one will go right here and one will go right here I already put this one up on top of here and hold it there for a few seconds make sure when you look at it from the bottom you have it even you got it hanging over and that looks like about right there we go well the power went out for about an hour so uh, what I did was I just uh, assembled this and uh, put it on the side of the building this is a little addition to the side so here we go added that on there and I'm gonna put this on my layout and see how it looks and uh, finish doing this I got to do the uh, do the tower right now and then I'm gonna add I found some old shingles from a bar mills kit that I had left over and I think I'm going to use those instead of the tar paper to just make it look a little bit better. And make sure this stays square. I'm just going to hold it there for a while to give this stuff to get a little bit tacky and then I'll be able to put it on its upright position and make sure it's square and then hold it that way. These are the uh, the shingles that I had left over from Bar Mills on another kit. And what you do is you take like three different colors and you just randomly, you know, uh, paint over top of the little th stickers. And basically, all it is it's a it's a peel and stick thing. And uh, see, that's what it looks like right there. Okay, I had to glue these glue these two pieces together here. This is the where the brackets came from and then and then this other piece and had to put it centered right in there and that looks pretty good. And that's going to go right here. This part goes down and this goes on top. And then the witch's hat goes on top of that. This is a tedious job, but the results are worth it. Okay, uh, I spent about 10 minutes on this so far, and I got four rows of shingles. Okay, here is the pitched roof. 
Uh, I have to put a little bit of glue underneath the uh, edges here where they're folded. Okay, I'm adding some glues to the to the edge of this door. Okay, just press that in there. Make sure it's in there good and tight. Now that we have that, all we have to do is put the uh, put the top the roof up on there. I'm gonna run some glue all the way across the top here. And then we'll stick that on. But not a lot of them, and there's not a lot of discoloration in the paint because they, they're taking care of it right there. All we have to do is just uh, weather it a little bit more, and we'll be we'll be finished with it. Just getting covering all the areas making sure that you can see the in the little cracks of everything that you can see the Indian ink in there and I'll do the door garage door also I'm gonna let that set on the uh, on the white let that dry and then see how it looks I may go over it again and what this does it wrinkles it up a little bit too so I already put some up on the roof up here and it's dry so I'm gonna make this a little bit darker that's it for now so I hope to see you again soon and don't forget to uh, subscribe right here bye